The Skeleton Crew show is for immature audiences only. Hi, this is Carol Locatell from Friday the 13th, Part 5. You big dildo, would you shut the fuck up and listen to the Skeleton Crew? You're listening to the Skeleton Crew, exclusively at HorrorBid.com and Horrorphilia Podcast Network. Okay, and welcome to an all-new episode of The Skeleton Crew. I am Michael J., joined, as always, by Alex Edwards and Mr. Dan Chase, who has been excommunicated from the building. <laughs> yep, he, he was a lot. Security wouldn't let Dan in. They gave him a pat-down, and it turns out Dan had some drug paraphernalia on him. <laughs> Dan, you've got to leave it at home, Dan. got to leave it at home. He was not allowed into the dungeon. Why can't you just let me in? Uh, we could throw a rope down. You could climb up the side of the building like Batman. Yeah, yeah let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, I'll be Robin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike, by the way, that intro, I said only once. Yeah, but I, I, I just love doing it. I love the sound of my voice now. Oh, God. <laughs> I think... I, I, I love just hearing myself talk like other people that we know. Mike leaves himself voice messages, by the way. I do. All right, let me let me get this party started. Hold on. Okay. What the hell was that? <laughs> Bottle cap. <laughs> ah. We should know that sound by now. Yeah, come on. It's a staple on our show. Now, here's what's not a staple. How's that segue? That was different. <laughs> yeah. Lying to us is not a staple, is it, Mike? No, many people lie to us, Alex. That's true, but... <laughs> Mike's like, dude, I get lied to all the time. Yeah, Mike does get lied to all the time, in all fairness. Mm -hmm. You know, we told him he was a great co host. He does a superb job on the news. Yeah, that's a lie. Exactly. <laughs> so here's the thing here's, here's what really bothers me. Yeah. Anchor Bay is releasing Halloween 4 on Blu ray, which we are giving away, which we will get to. Yeah. But we were just informed of a very um, interesting situation. Well, if you want to call it that, I call it a major disappointment, but whatever. Yeah, I call it some bullshit. As you all know, there were supposed to be 30 never-before-seen minutes of bonus footage. They shot scenes or whatever, I don't know, didn't make it into the movie, and we were supposed to get all that in this Blu-ray. But... Alright, you know what? I, I actually want Dan in the studio just to talk about the Halloween four debacle. So Dan, can you? So you're smuggling him in? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get him in here. So uh, all he's, right, he's... I'll, I'll be lookout. You get him. Yeah. yeah. Grappling hook, Dan. Grappling hook. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Swung around the bar. Just get in here. All right, now let's talk about <laughs> Halloween four Blu-ray. Oh boy, thirty. Oh, oh, he's in. All right, what's up, buddy? Let's see. Yeah, no, I, after that, I'm going back out the window. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, here, Dan, here, just hold on to this for a second. All right. <clears throat> now, all right, Halloween 4 Blu-ray. The biggest, basically, their press release said that uh, we were getting 30 never-before-seen minutes of Halloween 4. And through Rob Galuza's uh, review status, through Mike finally getting his review copy... Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I'm surprised that I didn't get mine around the same time as, as Rob G. It took me a few days. I think I got mine like the day, a day or two after Rob G. got his. Well, that's because they know how shitty our show is. Probably. Right. So yeah. there you go. And we basically broke the news a day early. And um, I think between Rob and us, we prompted them to revise their press release. We put well, they email. had to. The, the footage wasn't there. And I mean... I opened it up and I was, ex you know, because I, I listened to Rob's thing and he said it's not there. So, of course, I wanted to be sure. So I opened it up. It's shrink wrap. So I unwrapped it. I popped it in. Menus are great, but <laughs> no footage, you know. Mike, there is no 30 minutes. That's confirmed. They redid a press release. And the press release, yeah. you know, listen, they're sponsors of the show. We're giving away the uh, four and five... Two sets. Two sets of four and five Blu-ray, which we will get to in a minute. The new questions. 
<coughs> and we appreciate their supporting the show, but yeah, we we you know you can't lie to people. You can't do false advertising. I mean, how many pre-orders are in that people? went with the assumption that they're getting 30 bonus minutes. That maybe they wouldn't have bought the Blu-ray. Maybe they'd say, eh, the DVD's good enough, but I gotta have this 30 minutes. <clears throat> they pay $25 or whatever the listed price. Whoever, who knows where they got them. And, um, you just can't do that. No. You know? No, not at all. And, and you know, and I like what I saw Sean Clark post on Facebook the other night when somebody posted to him about, you know, the footage not being on there. I like how he said, you know, maybe Anchor Bay should have stepped up and let me do the horrors, hollowed grounds episodes like he did for the Shout Factory release of two and three. Yeah, that would be nice. I mean, I would love to see him go through uh, the part four location. Right. I'd like to know what happened with it, though. Like, was that a straight up lie or did they It was have probably that? a miscommunication and it probably never existed. I don't think it exists. Mike has theories. I mean, what, Mike? They, they've been releasing this movie for 25 years. Right. But... And the thing is, you would think that sometime within those 25 years that this footage would have surfaced, you know? And now all of a sudden you're going to put it on Blu-ray and all of a sudden it just magically appears? I don't think so. It just doesn't seem plausible to me. So, yeah, I don't think it exists. And I know at least... Three people so far have canceled their pre-orders. Yeah, and you know we're not happy about that, but in, in the same vein, hey, you know, false advertising. Sorry. Yep. What are you gonna do? Um, you know, but, uh, speaking of that, you know, our next show we have some special guests for you. We have Nick Castle, John Carpenter, and Rob Zombie on the next show, and it's actually gonna be a paid podcast. So just <laughs> you you could prepay now. Send us a dollar. To our PayPal. Oh, oh, it's a dollar. Okay. Yeah. Is, that's and um, they're going to be on for 30 minutes. It's a panel, right? We're going to have... Yeah, a, a panel discussion. I'm going to talk to I should know. Them. I worked it out. Yep. Um, and these guys might argue. We don't know what's going to happen. And you never know. It's it's un, un, unheard before. So just send us... I want Jamie Lee to throw a chair. Jamie Lee. <laughs> see, you just ruined it, Mike. She was the special guest. I mean, uh, mystery guest. No, oh, no. I thought you mentioned it. That's no, no. Nick Castle. Oh. And Tyler Maine is going to be there. Oh, well, Tyler Maine could destroy them all. Yeah, so this is That's for 30 right. minutes on the next show. So just send in your money now, and you'll get the show when it comes out. Right. So <laughs> so there you go. And I'm, I'm against false advertising. I just really think what they did was wrong. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> Completely so wrong. just send those dollars in, please. <laughs> as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yes, please. You, you can, <laughs> hey, you can take our word for it. Michael J., you should take some scenes from Camp Out Nightmare and then cut them in and put them as special features on the Halloween 4 or 5 Blu-rays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't work too well, there. That's beneficial for everybody. Yeah, how did everybody like uh, Michael J.'s Camp Out Nightmare 6? <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. Well, some people had to watch it then. Some people, I wonder how long they watched it to the point where it registers as a click. I wonder if five minutes count. Well, I watched like 45 minutes of it, but I was running around that day, so that wasn't any other reason. Like, I didn't fall asleep or anything like I do some movies, so it was yeah. it was thoroughly entertaining. Yeah, so it was, Mike. You did a swell job on that movie. For, well, that was all, Alex, for the um, editing. Um, all right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. You can watch Mike's Camp Out Nightmare 6 on our YouTube channel, as always. Make sure you jump on the iTunes thing, because uh, our future shows, including this one, will have musical things in there that the YouTube channel shows will not have. Well, Just... they might have, depending if we get flagged or not, right? <laughs> yeah, if we don't, if we get flagged, I'll pull it and I'll put one out there that doesn't have that stuff on there. But we don't want to get thrown our channel, to, you know, canceled. All right, so here, let's go back to the uh, Halloween Blu-ray giveaway contest. Here's how it's going to work. There's going to be a total of two winners. Only one win per person. If I pick your name out of the bucket two or six times, you still only win once. Sorry, don't get uh, don't get greedy. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, please. Yeah. 
Okay, so in the spirit of Halloween 3, I really want to do a big giveaway at, at 9 kind of deal. Happy, happy Halloween, 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 happy, happy Halloween, Silver Shadow Man. Happy, happy Halloween, 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 happy, happy Halloween, Silver Shadow It's almost time, kids. The clock is ticking. Be in front of your TV sets for the horathon. And remember the big giveaway at 9. Don't miss it. And don't forget to wear your masks. The clock is ticking. It's almost time. Happy Happy Halloween, 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 Happy Happy Halloween. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to videotape myself putting the names in, shaking the bucket, pulling the names out, and I'll do this while recording the show so that you guys can hear that the audio matches the audio of our radio show. And you know that I didn't just redo it so, you know, one of my friends win or something like that. And you know that it's legit. It was only done once, and that's how it is. And plus, I have no friends, so there's nobody I want to win more than the other person. That seems like a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but does it all make sense? Yeah, we do a lot of work for the show, so. Yeah. So there you go. So here are the two final questions for the Halloween 4 and 5 Blu-ray giveaway, which will enter your name into the drawing. Question number four. In episode 5, Alex mentioned the picture of Jason that the cop had at the end of the movie. Where did Alex say it looked like Jason was in that picture? Did I say it looked like he was at the movies? Did I say it looked like he was on an airplane? Like, where did I say it looked like he was when that picture was taken? And that's, that's one answer. Question. Question number... Oh, I'm sorry, was that question number 4 or was that question number... One, two, three, four, five. That was five. That was five, yes, five. It really doesn't matter, but... So this is question number six. The final question. The final one. This is the last one, because we're, we're doing the drawing next show. Yeah. So you have till Wednesday at 4 p.m. to answer every one of these. In episode 11, what line of Robert England did Alex describe... It sounded like a duck took a shit in his mouth. <laughs> 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 I almost want to say it because I love the way you sound when you say it. <laughs> Isn't that so seriously? A duck took a, fu- uh, sh- uh, p- uh, in his shit in his mouth. Uh, I want to do hard hitting questions. <laughs> yeah, this is you know. So there you go. That's why this show is for a mature audience only. Yes. yes, indeed. So there you go. So email those answers to Alex at the Skeleton Crew Show dot com, and you have to till Wednesday, four p.m. This next one, let me give you a date so there's no confusion. Wednesday, um, August 15th. The 15th. Yeah, to answer by 4 p.m. Eastern to submit all your answers. If you haven't submitted any, I'd go back and do it, uh, especially since you're most likely not getting those bonus 30 minutes (laughs) in that Halloween for you. You just might not want to pay for it. Yeah, right. So there you go. And as for another giveaway we had, uh, sponsored by Horrorphilia.com, we have the Perfect House giveaway. Uh, The first winner of that was Kyle Dennis. Congratulations, Kyle. Yeah. And and by the end of this show, and Kyle, thank you for all your feedback and uh, supporting the show also. (laughs) The next winner will be announced later on in this show. Ah, you're making them wait for it. That's that's a good boy. I actually bought the perfect house today. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, nice. I have to buy it still. Yep. We got some more listener letters. Listener letters. <laughs> listener letters. Mike loves listener letters. It's my favorite part of the show. This one is from John Moran. Hey, John Moran. I know him. Hey. He referenced something I said about Dick Warlock in episode 25. Oh, he was Dick Warlock. I know. And I said we should ask Dick Warlock how he feels about ruining Halloween, too. (laughs) And I think a lot of Halloween fans disagree with me on that one. But let's get into this. He wrote, Alex, I agree with you a lot, but I'm going to have to disagree with you when it comes to Dick Warlock's portrayal of Michael Myers. Oh, shit, son. Yes, he may be slower than usual, but I feel that Dick played the most inhuman and evil Michael in the whole series. He didn't need to walk fast to catch Lori. He knows she has nowhere to go. I really look forward to next week's show. Well, thank you, John. Thanks, John. But you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, but 
but but here's here's the thing. So what do you guys think? Before I, I give you, I'm gonna fix it all, like I promised in that one show. What are you gonna mm-hmm. do? I'm gonna fix it. How are you gonna fix it? Because I think Dick Warlock did ruin the movie, and I think he didn't do it alone. I think uh, Rick Rosenthal helped him ruin it. I think you're wrong. <sighs> Tell me what you think about this. Okay. Okay. Let's just get to. <clears throat> okay, you got the part where his his walking in general, but then there's two specific scenes that really cry. This is going wrong. The one scene where Michael's walking to get Lori, and she's about to go in an elevator. Right. Could you walk any slower than that? If, like, if you compare him, and you should, because it's the same night. If you compare him to the Michael who walked down the stairs really quick after Lori, after she fell down, you know, she flipped over and fell, the speed he walked down those stairs, the speed he walked across the street, you know, uh, overall, he was, he walked like a normal guy. Yeah. Well, again, I have, I have something to tell you here with this now. Um, he did get shot six times and fall from a second story uh, balcony. Mike, you're an asshole. Uh, he probably broke some bones. Maybe he sprained a wrist. Um, <laughs> broke his tailbone, possibly. Okay. You know, when you break your ass, that hurts. Stole my thunder. I can't help that. You know, you got to look at it from a realistic point of view. I should have never uh, posed that question before I stated my statement. Of course you shouldn't have. Why did I ask Mike? Because <laughs> I suck. <laughs> okay, well, that was pretty much my answer to fix this all. <laughs> So your answer was, I suck? That's awesome. No, that's my answer for every other problem in my life. Mike sucks and ruined it. (laughs) That's good. Yeah, I was going to say Michael got shot, fell 30 feet to the ground, the bullets probably... wasn't 30 feet. Whatever. It was probably like 10 feet. Slight paralyzation, his nerves were damaged, lack of full movement, and that explains everything in... Halloween 2, but thank you, Mike, for stealing that away from me. So, so since you hate Halloween 2 so much, are you going to buy the Blu-ray, and or are you going to burn it and then break it again, like you did with Resurrection? No, I love Halloween 2. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Okay, so you won't be breaking the Blu-ray. That's good. No, I love it. I actually have so the other one. you think he has one of the worst betrayals, Alex, but it's one of your favorite movies? Absolutely. Okay. Makes no sense. No, it does well, make no, sense. it makes sense to me. Uh, you know, it's uh, it is what it is. You know, that I see. I thought you hated the movie because of that. No, I don't like, hate that, that movie. didn't ruin it for you at all, though. No, no, yeah, it ruined it for me a little. <laughs> okay, did you cry? But like I said, I I fixed it in my mind by putting together the six bullets and all the other stuff and falling. Mm-hmm. Right. I gave it a pass for that reason. But here's the, the true thing. That's not what Rick Rosenthal was doing. So let's let's get that out of the way. If you ask him, he probably didn't even remember that the guy fell out of a balcony. <laughs> I'm sure he did because he reshot that footage. Go, go to hell, Mike. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I watched Maniac Cop. Maniac Cop. How yeah. was it? It was excellent. Really? I've never seen it. That's one of those movies I always wanted to see. Mike, Mike, give him the list of the the uh, stellar cast. Oh, Dan, this is like no. amazing. You've got you've got Bruce Campbell. Okay. You've got Robert Zadar as Maniac Cop, and he was also in uh, films like Tango and Cash, among many right. others. The guy with the big jaw. Yeah, the guy with the big yep. jaw. Yep. Um, you have Tom Atkins. You can't forget him. Ooh. Of course not. The Atkins. And he has the mustache fully intact. Yeah. I'm sure he does. That's a staple. And I, I think there's some other people in there. Well, but I don't know that's about it. That's all you need. That's yeah. all you need. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys sold me. Okay, so how was it, Alex? It, Dude, it was really good. I mean, they really thought out, really well done, really good use of everybody. Uh, Mike, am I, do you think there's any spoilers? Can I, can I say what happened to Tom Atkins that really bummed me out? I don't have to say it. If anybody knows... Yeah, I mean, because if, if we were going to eventually do a retrospective, you might not want to get too deep into it here. Yeah, and I would like to eventually, because I heard Maniac Cop 2 is really good. Right. And the possibility that we may also be able to get Robert Zadar for the show, I think you're thrilled with as well. Yeah, I don't think his, I don't think his chin will fit in the studio, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. You're a horrible gentleman. You're a horrible human being. He might have to be outside next to Dan on the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Let, let's hope know. they don't, you know, hopefully he doesn't have any drug paraphernalia problems. Yeah. So, um, so there, that was thank you for the listener letters, John Moran. Listener yeah. letters. <laughs> so that's listener the end letters. of listener letters. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. now uh, we have an interview coming up. And that interview is uh, John Amplaz, who played Martin in the movie Martin. I love how you say that. You're like played. You're like played Martin in the movie Martin. Well, it's not often you get to say that. You know, I mean, how often is the movie named after a character? Well, here's the thing. John Amplaz, the movie Martin, is basically a movie about vampires, but not really. So, in honor of this interview. We are going to review a movie that is about vampires, but not really. That's, <laughs> but it's a new movie. You see that Martin is from the 70s. 77. And this is from, two, it says 2011 on IMDb, but I, I haven't even heard of this coming out. I thought it was new. No, it is. It is. It it's is. new? It's, uh, if I yeah, haven't seen it, it, it came it's out new about, to me. Yeah. No, it actually came out um, maybe a few weeks or a month ago. Oh, good. Ah. Perfect. So we're going to strike while the iron's hot. Uh, okay, Mike didn't see it. Me and Dan did. So we're going to go ahead and get into this. Now, first, Dan, let's try to give some light reviews, and then we'll start with the spoilers. So uh, for light reviews, um, what do you think of it overall for first off? <laughs> overall? Dude, I just watched this movie before uh, jumping on with you two retats. Um, <laughs> no, it was perfect, dude. I love this movie. I fucking... I loved it. It was great. It's uh, it's how a vampire movie should be done this day and age. After yeah, you know, you go to Underworld and 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 all the, everything else. So, yeah, I loved it overall. Yeah, and, um, I was blown away. Um, I, to me, a lot of times when I judge a movie, it's it's kind of like how well it keeps my attention, what kind of pace it has, and how interesting the story is. Which I think, obviously, everybody does that, but. Uh, it hit it hit all points for me. I think about two or three minutes of this are a little slow, and that's it. So that's really, really good. Um, that's it? Really? Yeah. See, I thought the whole movie was, was slow, except for a few few of the action scenes. But it's it's paced really slow. There's a lot of close-up shots of the dude's yeah. face and, and people's... But I love the way it's shot, too, though. Like, I love that stuff. It's very intimate. It's very much so. Dude, it's very and, and intimate. Where, like, I watching the chick on, on screen dude like i fell in love with her when you know i probably wouldn't if it was shot like a uh like a quote-unquote normal movie but they got right up in there and uh it, it it was very like um i'm trying to find the word for it but it it, it was very um you got really into it yeah about maybe an hour in not even 45 minutes in dude right off the bat i was into really? it yeah and i know what you mean it's it's slow, mm -hmm. but it's it's like Halloween slow. It's it's great the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Agreed. It's even faster than Halloween because even though they John Carpenter utilized the boring scenes with having Michael drive behind Laurie and Annie during that boring scene. Or when Michael was standing in the doorway during the boring scene where she's on the phone to Lori. Or, you know, when when Annie's getting the keys, that amazingly boring scene. And she walks back in the house, then she walks mm -hmm. back. Like, that to me, I'm like, ugh, come on. Like, do something. But yeah. it's all used with... John Carpenter used it all, and it's almost like you can't get rid of those scenes. Right. This movie is that same kind of thing, but it was just good, and everything that happened was totally interesting. So to, I would like to get into some of that. Definitely. Definitely see this movie. And, and Alex, one thing about the long shots, too. See, with, with movies like this, dude, I think it conveys a lot more when you hold the shot on somebody where there's not a cutaway. You see the range of emotions they go through from scene to scene. And, and it to me, like those shots in Halloween... I love that, dude. Like, a lot of people say slow movies like that just don't do it for them. But, and, and I agree that you have to be in a certain type of mood 
to get into those type of movies. Like, you can't be, like, you know, like, hyped up and see a fucking awesome vampire movie, you know? Yeah, yeah. You can't be hopped up. You can't be distracted either. You can't be looking at your phone and checking your Facebook messages. or You cannot do that. Like, I literally, when I got really into this movie, I actually clicked my uh, phone silent, flipped it yep. upside down so I wouldn't see the light come on. It's one of those movies, dude. Yeah, and there's only a few characters in it. There's, what, a cop? That's the other movie. great thing. Yeah. 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 So, okay, for, from here on in, we're getting into spoilers. All right, now let's get into this. Okay. Uh, basically, the um, plot is that a guy who's completely unsuspecting, he works at night security. He can't go out in the sunlight because he has a skin disorder. His arm was all burnt up. He never put two and two together, didn't think of anything, and just kind of, you know, went on with life. Working in the sec- night shift. Yeah, night shift security. And that's how it starts off. Suddenly, he starts having headaches, he collapses, things like that. <clears throat> then, eating like crazy. He has a hunger inside of him. It, he just doesn't know how to uh, get rid of the cravings of hunger in general. And it's just not satisfying, no matter what he eats. So he goes to the doctor. The doctor tells me he has anemia, probably, because his body is, like, dying, even though he's eating all this food. He's actually shutting down. Still doesn't put it together. He uh, starts eating all the, all these uh, steaks or whatever, and he eventually is still hungry, and he looks at the uh, foam that the steak came in, the foam little plate at the bottom, and he sees, like, that, you know, that really watery blood. And then you just look, and you know what he's going to do. And at, at the moment, you don't know this is a vampire movie. Like, I didn't know. I, I thought it was about something else. I really thought maybe the sun never goes down, and everybody, like, you know... You ever see the Twilight Zone episode, The Midnight Sun? Yeah. I, yep. Yeah, that was a great one where the sun never goes away. And I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't even look at the cover or nothing. I just I just watched it. So he drinks that, that blood, and you think that's really gross. And that's just the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So So basically, like, I don't know, Dan. I think it was a great progression, like uh, how he tried to make sense of it all. He goes and he rents Fright Night. He drinks that little bit of blood, but then all of a sudden, uh, what was the first thing he did when he first drank blood? Oh, he drank like a cup of it from the butcher shop. Yeah, yeah, he got, uh, he meets up with this chick um, outside, what, of a bar? She's selling blow pops or something, mm-hmm. and uh, she has a nosebleed, and he tastes the blood off of that, and he's like, what just happened? And, you know, he's just like, what the fuck? So then he goes um, to the <laughs> he goes to the hospital looking for blood, digging in dumpsters. Yeah, and and, and that's where you meet this. Uh, I don't know his character. Yeah, he's a real cool. See, I thought he was a really cool guy, and I'll tell you what. Yeah. When he dug through the dumpsters looking for blood, and this guy comes out. Basically, he works at the hospital. Uh, he comes out. He goes, "What you doing, man? You know what's up? What, what do you need out of there, man?" And all of a sudden, he goes, "Oh, you need blood." And then he realizes he does. And then uh, what I really liked about that scene, and it's weird because it became like a, a repetitive thing throughout the movie, so it's weird how I picked up on it. When uh, the guy goes, you don't think I'm weird for wanting blood? And he's like, hey, man, everybody got their thing. Hey, man. Yeah. You know, it was something like that. Everyone's got their thing or something like that. Yep. And I really liked that. You know, it kind of made me think of myself and uh, maybe don't be so hard on people, you know, if they do, if they're into stupid shit. Yeah. No, I think that was a that was a theme in the movie, dude. Exactly. And and they they went back to that scene at the end and uh yeah, dude, exactly. Everybody's got that thing, man. Yeah. But there were some crazy scenes, dude, like when his eyes turned yellow, I was like, "Oh shit." And yeah. uh the one really crazy scene. You know, the guy tells him, "You know, I'll sell you this blood for $150 each." So then they go to his house and the guy is basically selling drugs to people and they'll and they're giving their blood to get the drugs like he literally hands them a bottle of pills and pumps the blood out of their veins dude that's totally what would really happen oh real dude life. that was so hardcore yep. that was so good even the lighting of this movie was great you, you ever did you notice that when the girl was doing blow in the bathroom she looked in the mirror she looked like a complete piece of shit low life dirt bag cuz the lighting made her look that way and then in the very next uh like when she comes back around and things are going good with her and this guy, she goes to do blow again and she she doesn't do it because her life is kind of more in an upward, you know, uh, direction. And then when the light hits her the second time in the bedroom, she looks beautiful. Yep. You yep. know. 
they they hit every facet, dude. Him trying to balance his relationship while he's going through this change. I mean, uh, he, you know, even the girl's transition of her cleaning her life up. There were there was a lot of shit in this movie that kind of went without saying. And there was a lot of scenes even with no lines, but you could just tell it was trying to convey so much. And not forcing it. Yeah. I don't want to call it like an art film, but it, it makes me think of shit like that because it makes me think when I watch movies like this. Like, it's very thought-provoking throughout the whole movie. Like you said, with the metaphors and everything. And I think subtlety is the biggest factor in all that, you know? The scene where this chick gets shot. I mean, tell me, like, every scene was not so... It's so weird because the movie is what would appear to be a slow pacing, but every scene is majorly intense. And you know what it is? You know why it was intense? Because the camera was so kind of intimate and close up on him yeah that it kind of pulled you into that loved it and it it almost puts you in those scenes and you kind of you live the movie and that's the beauty of it because not only is he experiencing these changes and going through this and trying to make sense of it but so are you and it's not over the top either it's very like low-key how things progress and stuff like that but at the at the end of the day at the end of the movie that would be the natural progression is to do what he did. Absolutely. And, you know what I mean? And, and that's what I like about these movies. And I love I love the Lost Boy stuff, so I'm not I'm not dissing this. Yep. But um in the Lost Boys, you know like in part two when they're all in the car and then the guy goes, Can you guys turn into bats? And the guy goes, Too many movies, man. You know, like trying to make like, oh, all that stuff is crap and we're the cool real vampires, man. You got to get with it. You know, that would, the funny thing is they are even the joke because right. they have the teeth coming out. They right. got the, you no know. No teeth in this movie. Yeah, right. And he even references that by putting fake teeth in when he thinks he's really becoming a vampire because he watched, um, <laughs> he was watching Fright Night and he put a cross <laughs> to his head and you see if it burns. Like, yep. it was yep. really realistic, really good. Definitely check it out. I mean, it was just really good. I mean, I'm I rate this like this is really good. I'm gonna rate this like a nine, man. Like I like it a lot. And as far as vampires are concerned, they they adhered to um the eyes. Yeah, they only did the eyes. Yeah. And then the need for blood, obviously. And right. then the only killer was the sunlight. No stakes. No. He even tried the cross. He put the cross up to his forehead. Yeah. The cross. You know, and and stuff like that. But. You know, we say it like it's funny, but the way it's done, the way it's shot, it's you can see yourself doing that in the bathroom if you had these same problems. Yeah. So, no, they yeah. they did the right thing. Like as I was watching this, I was like, "Who the hell wrote this?" Yeah, 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 dude. Well, and, and that's the thing too. Whoever wrote it, superb job. But whoever shot it and directed it, and even better, even better. Perfect. Everything correlated perfectly with each yeah, other. That's so. what I was I was thinking as I was watching. I said, "You know what?" By the time he was chaining the dude up to have him burn in the sunlight, I said to myself, you know what? Whoever wrote this got the perfect director. Mm-hmm. And it's very, um, it seems like a very uh, indie film, like an independent, low-budget movie. Um, and, and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. I just mean you can tell that they didn't go all out for this movie. You got your actors, you know. I think there was one nice car in the whole movie. And then there, there's a vet actor in it in there somewhere too um what's he played the janitor i've seen him in things too so you know you can tell that it, it's definitely up there but that's the thing though with these with these type of movies do when you shoot it like that direct it like that act it like that the actors were fucking incredible too man oh god and you do it like that then you don't you don't need a big budget dude you know oh what what they did was they took the money they had and maximize the possibilities and yep. it's because you know you're not shooting an all schwarzenegger movie here you no. you know you don't have to waste your money on shit like that like and it's not shit i love those movies but you don't right. you don't have to waste it on explosions and this and that always you can literally just get a camera go into an empty lot or wherever the hell they were half the time you know by the bridge by this by that in a hospital and here or whatever in mm -hmm. apartments and hell Save them a lot of money, and if you have a great writer and a great director, you got gold. Right. And and see, Alex, it, it's funny, too, because we don't really talk too much about this, but movies in general, I mean, I assume, because, you know, I know you pretty pretty well here, but I assume you just like good movies in general, out of the horror genre. like, And this, this falls into that category, though. Would you agree? Like, this is a good... Yeah. 
movie period forget horror or whatever this is a this is a very well emotion conveyed movie perfectly done so definitely go see it i mean i loved it dude you know and that's the thing too like you like good movies you appreciate good movies and this this definitely falls in the category forget genre forget all that bullshit i mean you know good movies are good movies and this yeah i'm, I'm considering buying this movie Mm -hmm. I would actually get the Blu-ray. I, I liked it that much. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's one of those dealies where how many times can you watch, and still feel that it's a little slow. Yeah. I, see, I'll watch this again down the road. But right. yeah, I mean, see, that's the thing too. I know a lot of people that are very easily distracted, and this isn't the movie for you. You know, no. you got you got to appreciate film in general. You got to have a history with it, with appreciation for shots and all that bullshit. So, yeah. if you're watching this, then then you know you're you're a fan of the uh, of the of of good movies in general, right? And if not, that's cool too. I mean, some people just can't get into movies like this. Whatever, keep them moving. You know, Transformers Four comes out next summer. <laughs> yeah, you know, and also, and the ending was like, um, you know. Here's the thing, when most movies come out and I like them the whole way through, the endings are always like, just like, come on, like I watched all that for that, like that's it. Make or break, yeah. Yeah, they make or break it, and I gotta tell you, this didn't, this wasn't like a ta-da, it wasn't like that, but it was, it was the right ending. Yeah, good shot it ended on too. <laughs> oh, well the shot was beautiful, the last shot was great. Come on, dude. That shot, they made a sick movie here. Him embracing, hit you know, and it you know he. It's always the reluctant werewolf, the reluctant vampire. You know, they never want to kill. I mean, there's plenty of movies where they didn't want to kill. Um, even even um the Tales from the Crypt episode when the vampire was working in a blood bank. He didn't even want to kill anybody. He just wanted to drink that blood. And then he eventually had to kill. And then he said, well, let me kill criminals and stuff. You know, I'll get rid of all the pieces of shit in the world. Right. You know, it's always reluctant. And this guy, yes. And, and just even Lost Boys, uh, the guy didn't want to kill the girls, remember? Even though he turned into a vampire. Uh, yeah. Lost Boys 2, even. I don't, right. I don't recall Lost Boys 1 too much. But Lost Boys 2 is more of my kind of movie. So I like it more. Even though I know it's, I know it's not as good. As part one, technically, but I like it more. I know people think it's a piece of shit, but what do I care? When I'm alone in my house watching, I don't really care what people think. So that's all that matters to me. Um, so there you go. So that's that's our review. I give it a nine. What do you give it, Dan? Oh, man. I'd say an eight. Okay. Solid eight. Yep. So there you go. So check out Midnight Sun, please. I mean, if we if you're hearing this, I hope you heard it already. I went, uh, we didn't spoil everything, but... Go see this. Good movie. Good horror. Guys, please go check it out. Midnight Sun, spelled S-O-N. Um, but it is not on Blu-ray. It is on DVD only. Christ. You know, I'm mad. I already bought the perfect house on DVD. I'm not willing to put up with too many DVDs. Yeah. What is it with these well, guys? this one, you'll have to, unfortunately. Yeah, them shits pile up. How do, uh, how does Laid to Rest 2, Chrome Skull have blu-rays and wait do they i don't even know if that's it, yes it does <laughs> okay yeah it does. And uh, Harris is, that's why yeah that's why and and good movies like the perfect house and midnight sun don't what is this Well, because they're indie movies and they don't have it in their budget dude please it's not in the budget that's what not i say at work all the time it's an ongoing joke it's not in the budget guys all right here that's let me end this and um <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. There's the Midnight Sun review. Uh, thank you, Dan, for joining me on that one. Uh, thank you, Mike, for not bothering to watch in a month. And uh, we will be back, and we hope you enjoy the John Amplaz interview. Mike really wanted this interview, and he said, Alex, please, could we just... And I said, that, I don't, I don't want to... I don't know. I don't know anything about the guy. I don't know what to say. I have no idea. And Mike's... But who gave you the questions, Alex? So when you guys hear these bizarre questions... And you're going to say, wow, Alex, that doesn't sound like him interviewing. That's because it's not. <laughs> it's Mike, and I read them. I said, Mike, you get the questions, and I'll do it. Fine. So when you hear the very first question, I read it exactly like Mike wrote it. <laughs> I, said, I said, what fascinated you about acting that made you want to get into this business? <laughs> you... You, sir, are an asshole. So when people go, why would he say what fascinated you? I wouldn't, guys. That's, that's not me. 
<laughs> well, then what would, wait, 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 wait. So, so what would you say then, Alex? How did you get into the business, John? <laughs> so then why didn't you say that? Good. Yeah, so anyway, we had a funny thing occurred during this interview. You know, Mike yelled at me because um, there's one point in the interview where John implies, uh, you know, he, he drank something and it went down the wrong pipe and he was coughing a little bit. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of waiting for him to, you know, get his bearings and continue on. And uh, it lasts a little, what, 20, 20 seconds? 20 seconds about, yeah. Yeah, and Mike, you know, when we hung up, he was like, dude, what, what's with you? Why didn't you say anything when he was coughing? And I and I said, why? What, what do you mean? And he goes, you didn't even ask him if he was okay and this and that. And, and you didn't even say, like, are you all right, sir? Can I get you anything? And I'm saying to myself, what the hell was I going to get him, Mike? I'm on the phone. You can get him a glass of water and pass it through the phone. That's, that's you know, the, the side of the phone that you speak through? There's also, like, you, if you reach through far enough, it'll reach him. Yeah. Did you ever see Nightmare on Elm Street? Yeah, I should have licked his face. Exactly. So, so Mike's like, dude, you just, you just sat there in silence while the guy coughed for 20 seconds. And I was like, uh, well, I didn't hear you saying anything to him. The guy can't even talk to answer the question. He wants to talk about his coughing now. You know, like, he, he's going to give me a play-by-play -play on his coughing. <laughs> you know, you eventually should have said something. I said I figured every cough would be his last one, and he'd get to the next sentence. <laughs> Doesn't that make sense? It does. That's horrible. You, you, Dan, you know what, Dan? Don't stoop to Alex's level, because it's not fun. <laughs> Oh, it's funny. And then when the guy finally said, I'm sorry, I, I, I drank and it went down the wrong pipe, I was like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. So it, it might be an awkward moment when you guys listen to the interview, and I don't know. What do you want me to tell you? Dude, this show's full of awkward moments. The whole show is an awkward moment. Let's just... <laughs> <laughs> so there you exactly. go. Exactly. Well put. Well put. Without further ado. Right. It's a good exactly. interview. Johnny Implaz is an awesome gentleman. Yeah. I love them very much. So listen and enjoy. The bumper has been removed from the YouTube broadcast. To hear the show in its entirety, click the link in the show's description box below. All right, and we're back, and we have with us a special guest, star of Martin, George Romero's film, among many other. We have John Amplis. Thanks a lot for coming on the show, John. It's my pleasure, Mike. What fascinated you about acting in the very beginning? What got you into the entire, you know, line of work? Oh, well, um, I started when I was about 10 years old. My uncle was a community theater actor here in Pittsburgh. And so um, I was, uh, he cast me in a play uh, when I was about 10. And so uh, I got the bug pretty early. Um, so I did a lot of community theater and um uh, did it through high school and acted and directed in my high school play. And then I went to the Army after that. And then I came back and studied acting at Point Park College in 1972 and graduated in 76. Right. Um, but I started pretty early. Now, did you find it like difficult to make the transition from st stage to screen? Um, no, I never thought it was uh, particularly difficult. I mean, you know, I think the work is the work. Um, there are probably some technical differences uh, in terms of because the technology is completely different, obviously. But, um, no, I never had any problem switching from one to the other. Because, I, like, I would imagine if you're on stage, you just, you know, do the whole show and it's done. But when you're filming a movie, it's cut, 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 cut. Yes. Really, you know, like it must have been difficult maybe to get in a character when you're so used to staying in character. Well, no, I just, it's just, um, you know, there are, you, you do have, you do do it, you do do it moment to moment, whether uh, you have to do it moment to moment from the beginning through to the end or uh, whether or not you're uh, doing just a, uh, uh, a minute or two um, at a time. It's still the work is still moment to moment. Um, it's about where you are, the given circumstances, uh, the time and place, and um, and you just do it. Yeah, I mean that's the way I think about it anyway. 
That's, that's cool. George Romero said that Martin is his personal favorite of all his films. Yes, and he should say that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he even commented on, on how well you played the role. Like, what, what were your thoughts after reading that script? Um, well, it, my thoughts are the same all the time. Um, I, I try to do what's on the page, and um, uh, I was attracted to it. Well, number one, I was attracted to it because it was my first job out, out, of, uh, out of college, and um, it was my first feature. So um, when you're offered that kind of opportunity, you know you, know you want to do a good job. I was attracted to the whole idea of this being, you know, it's not the gothic uh, vampire. Right. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not even, you know, there's an element in the film that kind of suggests that is he or isn't he. Mm -hmm. He is in that he takes blood. But is he that gothic kind of, you know, Dracula? No. I think uh, we're doing a little myth busting, you know. Right. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. He was mocking Dracula. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he is, he is, uh, you know, he's a psychotic kid. He's a, he's a crazy mixed up kid. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was attracted to that idea, uh, and that it was not going to be, you know, we were not going to try to make, uh, to do a remake of, uh, Bella Lugosi and, and all <laughs> that kind of stuff. So uh, it was a it was a modern day take and and uh, that was a, that was a big attraction for me, right? And that that's what I liked about it too is that it was really more of a psychological film than a straight out horror. And I mean, Absol I like George absolutely. Romero, I like George Romero, like the Living Dead movies and all that. But this sure. was just it seemed so much deeper to me, and yeah. especially like the the flashbacks, the black and white flashbacks that we'd go to. And it's like, right. see, I don't know. Was that was that supposed to be something of like your imagination from like a past well, that, life, or? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you know. Here's the deal: this kid uh, grew up in a family that believed in these in in these myths. Mm -hmm. He was trained, you know. He was trained to be what he became. Uh, it's like the uh, environment versus genetics. Uh, environment versus biology. Uh, I think his family kind of trained him and made him believe he was what they said he was. And if you hear if you hear something like that enough, uh, you start to believe things yourself. And so that's the that's the track I I took. Uh, and uh, this kid was just a crazy mixed up kid who um, was a product of uh, uh, of his environment. He was yeah. traded off from family member to family member, and you know ultimately he became to believe that he was what he said he was, that he was a vampire. Yeah, one of the best scenes was when you were with Kuda, and you uh, you took the uh, the garlic, and right. you, uh, and the cross, and you're like, it's just magic. It's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. You're you're one of those actors who, oddly enough, just like Bela Lugosi, when you played your part, it seemed like there was no separation between the actor and that character. Like it's so you were so believable. So, you know, we'll never be able to ask Lugosi. So maybe we could ask you. How did you get into the mindset? How did you? How do you think you pulled that off? I think it's uh, it's all acting. You do what um, <laughs> you just. <laughs> You just simply do what you know you're supposed to do. Yeah. You know, you call upon um, your uh, immediacy of the moment. What do you have to do? I mean, they, acting is acting. It's it's not as tough as everybody thinks it is. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it's just tough to get into, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Right. Uh, that's correct. It's tough to have a career in it. Right. Uh, here's a line from the film, too. There is, there's no, there is no magic. And there is no magic to acting, you know. There's only technique. Mm -hmm. You learn the lines. You know what you're supposed to be doing. When the when the camera rolls or the curtain goes up, you know you um, do exactly as you've been rehearsing, uh, or you do exactly as uh, your preparation has allowed you to bring you to this point, and you go. Yeah, because a lot of people, even 
like people like Jim Carrey, I heard that sometimes they stay in character like the entire three months or something weird like that. Like you don't you don't ever embark on that kind of thing, do you? No, I don't. But uh, you know, even even then, you know, Jim Carrey still knows he's acting. Whether he stays in character or not, uh, maybe that's something he needs to do in order to, you know, to help him. Yeah, that's all. It's all in the preparation. So uh, yeah, no. Other than you know, it was um, it was a really a great experience, and um, I was fortunate to be able to uh, have that opportunity. I was fortunate uh, to be able to work uh, with George on six of his films. Um, I was uh, George was a great help to me, especially during Martin, because it was my it was my first starring role, my first feature. Uh, I had done some film work before, but in much smaller uh, in a much smaller uh, context. And um, George was kind of a mentor for me. Um, he actually uh, he uh, found uh, he um, the the way I came to be cast in the role was that he came to see a play I was in. Uh, in fact, at my in my senior year of college in '76. The story is that he went away from that and uh, rewrote the text, rewrote the script, because um, he originally had an older character in mind um, to play the role. And um, uh, after seeing my performance in this play, he decided to change it. And then a couple of months later, I got a call and offered uh, he offered me the role. Right. So... Um, yeah, that was kind of an interesting and uh, fortunate uh, happenstance for me. With a movie like that, you know, it, one would wonder, were there any scenes that were, like, challenging for you, maybe you were uneasy with doing, even though you're acting, anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bedroom scenes with Elian Mado were a little... Um, uneasy? Uh, uh, there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> uneasy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, kind of figure that might be the one. <laughs> yeah, that's one of them. And that uh, that initial train sequence uh, with uh, Fran Middleton and I uh, uh, was a little, um, you know, uh, because of the nudity. I think that um, I, both of us, all of us, were a little uncomfortable. But you know, we suffered through it, and uh, it didn't turn out to be as bad as um, you know what. I thought it might be. <laughs> yeah, it time. gets easier with each take, too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you said that you continued with George Romero, but, you know, you not only did you do the acting with him, you did behind the scenes. Um, A little bit, yeah. In Dawn of the Dead, I did um, I did some of the casting, uh, and also um, uh, I played a couple of small uh, little roles in Dawn as well. Um, and, uh, well, I knew a lot of the Pittsburgh actors that he ultimately used at that time. Uh, so I was able to bring some of those people in, like, uh, Joe Pilato, uh, who I got cast. He had a little role in, uh, Dawn of the Dead, and then he got, of course, a really nice role in Day of the Dead. Yeah. And there were a few other kind of Pittsburgh folks that uh, I was able to get involved, and I cast a whole lot of zombies for Dawn. <laughs> that must have been fun. Well, it was fun because, uh, you know, what we did was we just put the word out that George needed uh, needed a cast of thousands. Uh, right, right. Uh, in terms of, and everybody wanted to be a zombie. So, you know, we collected all of our friends and George's friends, and, you know, and uh, so we put them on screen, and some of them became kind of prominent, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, I think they're still appearing uh, as these George Romero zombies at conventions and things. Yeah, there's so, a guy who has a, a machete through his face, I believe. Yes, Leonard Lee. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, he's pretty, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now... Now, you see, in the early 80s, you actually, you know, changed the course of your career and, you know, to include instructor and director. Like, what brought that on as opposed to acting and doing a little bit of behind-the-scenes work, like casting? Well, 
Well, the thing is that I was always a theater person. You know, that's that's how I grew up. I grew up in the theater. I trained for the theater. And um, in 19, I was after I shot Martin, I moved to New York. I was in New York for six years. Um, during that time, both my parents passed away. And in 1982, I came back to kind of settle things up. And um, I was offered a part-time teaching job because I was kind of out of a job and in between things uh, at at my alma mater um, at Point Park. And so I started to teach part-time um, acting there. And um, I also worked in, you know, with their theater company. So I did a lot of plays. Um, and it just so happened, you know, that I kept on doing that. And, um, you know, this September, I start uh, 30 years as a, as a professor at Point Park University. Wow. But yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've stayed in the theater. In fact, I've done more theater than I've done film. Right. Um, and um, uh, so... I've always been I've always been a bit of an actor and a director. I've always wanted to direct, and so in '82 I got my first shot at stage directing, and um, I've been doing it ever since. You know, I probably have a hundred, 150 plays under my belt, uh, either as a director or an actor. Um, wow! So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You fact, took a break. I, okay. Uh, Go ahead. You tell me. You say. You ask me. You're the, you're the interviewer. I'll shut my mouth. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to interrupt a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't ever be sure I'm giving you a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was just gonna say that you that break that you took from acting was from '85, and you didn't return until '93 with the uh, the dark half, 1993. Right. right. Uh, yes. Well, that's the break I took from George. <laughs> I oh, okay. Still, I, yeah, I was still I was still working. I was still in the theater. I was still, you know, doing what I do there. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, in um, '76 we shot Martin. I think it was released in '77 or '78. Um, shortly thereafter, we did um, uh, I did uh, Dawn of the Dead with George. Um, I think the chronology is after Dawn what came. Um, Night Riders, I think Night Riders came first, uh, and uh, that was a lot of fun because um, I didn't have to I didn't have to memorize any lines. I didn't have any lines in Night Riders, and that was terrific. It was like a ten week summer vacation for me, so a paid vacation too. Yeah, paid, yeah. <laughs> I was able to just yeah. I could copy of that down Night Riders from. Uh, oh, Netflix, is that right? So. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to actually finally being able to check it out. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a really good little film. It, 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 it's a great little film. In fact, it's Ed Harris's first feature. Did I miss anything? Oh, Creepshow. Creepshow was in there, too. I'm in the first episode, Father's Day. So yeah. I, play the corpse. I play the corpse that comes up out of the ground. The best part in the episode. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> oh, abs- absolutely, man. Yeah. Now, you know, see, here's what I want to ask, because I remember Fred Gwynn was very upset that he did so much theater, stage, all this stuff, and he said, he actually he said like a commentary sort of, he said how sad it is that most people only know him for playing Frankenstein and, you know, the monsters. Uh. Right. Now, do you do you feel like any animosity towards all that work you did on stage, and then people like just talk about maybe Martin or Return of the Living Dead? Did, like, yeah. do you feel do you feel that thing, or you don't really mind that? No, not no, no, not at all. First of all, I I would be uh, uh, I would be, have been happy to have had Fred. Cool. Quinn's career. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but I can understand what Fred means. I mean, he, you know, he here he is. He's a tremendous. He was a tremendous actor. But uh, what happens is uh, it's that which gets the 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 most amount of people seeing something that you're doing. You know, and the Munsters was a huge television hit. Right. And uh, it was seen by millions and millions and millions and millions of people, and became uh, became so huge 
that uh, it couldn't help but overtake everything else that he did, at least in the public, in, in terms of the public's uh, uh, eye. Right. Um, yeah. And um, it, it, the two, between film and theater, you know, more people, more people go to the movies and see the movies than exactly. they do theater. You know, there's about two percent of the population that even <laughs> goes to the theater. You know, uh, as opposed to as opposed to you know almost a hundred percent of the population <laughs> who watches sees, TV. Yeah, that watches movies on TV or watches television shows or or goes to the movie house to see them and. Yeah. So how so how can he be mad, right? <laughs> yeah, it's apples and oranges, you know. Yeah, exactly. No, I have no. I, I'm really proud of the fact, and and in fact, I'm completely astonished that uh, 36 years after I did Martin, that people are still interested, and I think it's a testament to the film. Mm-hmm that it has had that kind of impact on on the people that have appreciation for that kind of work. Yeah, the, the horror genre has an appreciation beyond any other genre. I absolutely agree with you. And, I, you know, I learned that. Um, I do conventions periodically. I would like to do a few more, but I can't, I, uh, you know, I just don't seem to be able to, to get in as many as I'd like to do, but, uh, and I've only been doing them for maybe four or five years. Um, but what I found out, uh, because I was a snob about it at first, I was asked to do them 15 years ago when they were first kind of getting started. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, that's gotta be insane. That's crazy. Why, why would anybody go and do that? And mm-hmm. I thought, so about five years ago, a fan actually convinced me to go to one that was here in Pittsburgh. I did a horror hound in Pittsburgh, and um, it blew me away uh, in terms of these fans that were coming up to me and talking to me about these films that I did with George and, uh, and, and what they knew about my work. Uh, right. I was right. I was absolutely astonished. I had no idea. Excuse me. There was that there were that many people out there um, that had that kind of appreciation for little old me. You know, who was sitting <laughs> here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Who had no idea that uh, that kind of fan base existed. And uh, since then, you know, I've had nothing but a love fest between the fans and myself. And it's been, um, it, it was an eye-opener, and it was a, a really, really pleasant one. You know, I was really, yeah. uh, I'm so gratified by the fact that all of these people are out there and have that kind of appreciation and follow the people um, that uh, that do the work, follow these filmmakers and, and um <coughs> <coughs> well, well, <coughs> excuse me, I had, I took a drink and something went down the wrong pipe. Okay. Yeah, Not a drink good. drink, just a, a Coke. Oh, too bad. <laughs> Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. No rum? <laughs> no, I'm dry. You know, I've been I've been sober for 21 years. So. Oh wow. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that, those uh, the yeah my imbibing days uh, are long past. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least uh, you had a couple good ones, right? That's all right. You can still have them. That's all right. You know, yeah. I, I I did it a little too often and a little <laughs> too much. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what are your plans for the future? Any, like, new writing or directing or acting that's going to take place in the next couple of years? This year it's kind of dry. No, I mean, I just, uh, uh, I opened a, uh, I had a play, I did a, a new play I opened here in Pittsburgh in uh, March. Right now, next year I'm going to do, a, um, I'm contracted with, um, uh, a, a young director, um, I think he's here in Philadelphia or New Jersey. His name is Christian Grillo. 
he did a he did a film that is coming out in September, uh, and I think the name of it is The Legend of Garvin County. And uh, Doug Bradley had a role in it, uh, Pinhead. Yep, Pinhead. And um, so he's going to make, uh, Christian's going to do uh, Garvin County, The Legend of Garvin County 2. And okay. so I'm contracted for that, which is to be shot next September, or next, next summer, I think. Right. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for doing the interview and coming on the show, man. It was really fun. Oh, absolutely. I hope I wasn't, uh, you know, too too talkative. Maybe I should have shut up for right. a while. Mike was too talkative. Mike, will you shut up? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the bumper has been removed from the YouTube broadcast. To hear the show in its entirety, click the link in the show's description box below. It's time for the hard bit headlines. Yeah, Sunday, oh. Sunday, Sunday. All the latest <laughs> news. <laughs> and there's also some news from a few months ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to do the mat mini 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 mat mini mini mini. Dan knows what that is. Yeah, I, I have some show news. You do? What's your oh, show news? Jonathan Tiersten, Ricky from Sleepaway Camp, is a listener of this show. Oh, nice. And he actually made a few comments on episode uh, 25 on the YouTube channel. No shit. Episode 25. What one was that? The big one. Yep. And by the way, Mike, uh, Justin, I got wind that Justin is sending you flowers and ordered you new canes in celebration of your big hit in journalism with the Halloween 4 Blu-ray news. I wonder for <laughs> the heavy-duty canes, because I have heavy-duty canes. I. Uh, I think I think he sent the heavy duty canes. Ooh, they're like eighty bucks. They're like eighty bucks a set. He's digging into his pockets, that gentleman. I appreciate that. Thank you, Justin. Uh, absolutely. Thank yeah. you, Justin. Thank you for all your support, buddy, and for the. Uh, he really liked episode twenty-five too. By the way, give me some news. All right. How about this? Was Alfred Hitchcock a sexist? Star of the Birds, Tippi Hedren says that Mr. Hitchcock begged her for sex. And when she said no, he uh, was mean to her. And she basically said, you're so ugly, who would want to have sex with you? <laughs> I don't know. Ask the girls who had sex with Steven Tyler. Well, but here, here's my thing. The Birds was made in 1963. It is now 2012. Uh, Tippy Hedren's got to be up there. Uh, or, I mean, they say it's being investigated, but is she a reliable source? Do you yeah, think maybe it's the being dimension? investigated. Who's investigating? Yeah, who gives a shit? Yeah, I don't know. I heard it on the talk. Um, who, who's gonna say I'm gonna get this Alfred Hitchcock? This son of a bitch. And who? What kind of a reliable source is someone named Tippy? Well, I. <laughs> Well, and plus, I think, you know, the dementia might be starting to set in, unfortunately, so. Yeah, at this point, she's tipsy. Right. Oh, tipsy. I don't know. No, um, it, it's, it's, but up. Oh, whichever. Um, Everybody in the club get tipsy. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead. Congratulations, <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock. You asked a girl to have sex with you. You're an asshole now. And she Let's... said no. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he's just like the rest of us. Okay, great. Right. He's, he's, a, he's a regular womanizer. Exactly. Is Lionsgate rebooting Saw? Oh, fuck you, Lionsgate. And <laughs> I, I think the answer is going to be yes, not There's only because Mike. number one, what? Why do you think that, Mike? Why would you think that? Why would I think what? That it's going to happen? Yes. Well, how much money do you think the franchise made in total wait, for wait, Lionsgate? Dude, a reboot, though? A fucking Well, no, 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 no. They, they, they said nothing is definite. They said he will return... But an eighth film is, st you know, could still be in the cards. So we could still get a Saw 8. But I think that'd be ridiculous. It was it's ridiculous. not ridiculous, dude. Oh, all right. Making sequel after sequel is fucking ridiculous. But if you're going to make them. Out of the Halloween. Oh, really? Not... Really? Ch -ch -ch. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, sir. Hey, Halloween <laughs> sequels one after the other are not ridiculous. That's hey, all. Awesome. It may be ridiculous. I still like it. Yeah, because Halloween 5 was awesome. <laughs> it's better than Halloween Resurrection or Halloween Shit Pile, as I call it. Uh, that's true. No, uh, don't forget and my logic. And better than H2O, by the way. It's like a treat, motherfucker. 
<laughs> now you're wrong, Mike. How can you say Halloween 5 is better than H2O? Uh, it is, because dude, Jamie Lee oh, Curtis is an H2O, and she's full of herself by that time. I am not even buying that piece of shit Blu-ray, dude. I have never... Remember how you, you find it hilarious that I didn't buy resurrection before i stabbed yeah. it on the video <laughs> what i know i hated and at least i bought the blu-ray okay i what? never bought a copy of halloween 5 on dvd well then you know that that's your loss dude i saw that video like uh about what a year before i even knew alex or talked to him or whatever <laughs> and i thought it was the funniest fucking thing ever and then <laughs> i'm a comedian you know that i'm hilarious after Dark Comedy Club. Uh, yeah, I was going to do a bunch of comedy skits. They were going to go on that channel, but it went somewhere else. That channel took a turn. That's disappointing. How about Synapse? How about Synapse? <laughs> re- no, you're the comedian here. <laughs> I'm just trying to move things along, sir. That's all. Just move it along. Eh? How about you know, Mike, I gave you a segue. Can we at least do the Halloween 5 shit, buddy? <laughs> yeah, come oh, on. I have, I, I, I have no sense of segues or anything like All that. All right, go ahead. Do your segue. All right. So, Synapse is reissuing Basket Case 3 Mike, on DVD I, October. Mike, are you deaf? <laughs> oh, oh, that thing. Okay. A segue, that. yes. is That means now you get to talk about the thing you wanted to talk oh, about. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I didn't realize that. I'm retarded. Jesus Christ. Continue. Okay, okay, Halloween 5. I would never buy the piece of shit. So, Mike, what do you think about Halloween 5? Well, <laughs> maybe the uh, the Blu-ray that is just coming out in a few weeks from Anchor Bay should not be bought. Because we didn't mention this in the uh, beginning of the show, but the press release for Halloween 5, the bonus features, are wrong. It says that the 17-minute featurette, um, Halloween 5 on set, the 17 minutes of raw footage is new and it is not new it is on the 2006 Divi Max DVD release but Alex since you never bought the DVD you wouldn't know that I don't really need to see 17 more minutes of bullshit yeah but it's not the movie it's it's them filming the movie it's anything behind- about that time period from when they first yelled action to they last yelled cut I don't need it I don't need it in my life <laughs> I have enough misery in my life I, I waste enough time on a weekly basis. I'm sure. <laughs> can, can we move on now? Yeah. Perfect. All right. So, <laughs> Synapse is reissuing Basket Case 3 on DVD October 9th. <laughs> Mike, did your parents build a, a wall next to your swing? <laughs> I never had a swing because being gimpy, I was afraid I would fall off. They have a big brick wall next to it. Mike, he wants to push you again. He's like, fuck you. <laughs> All right, come on, Mike. Okay. Let's get serious. Come on. Okay. Do the news. Do the news. <laughs> there has to be something that's uh, credible here. Yeah, come on. So, Synapse is reissuing Basket Case 3 on DVD October 9th. Uh, as you know, this was released by um, Fox Home Entertainment. Back, I guess, in the early 2000s. Um, I bought that one, very hard to find, but now Synapse is reissuing it. The only bonus feature thus far is the theatrical trailer. Most likely, I will buy this one. Oh my god. Again. What? Why, dude? This, Why? This is what I think of that movie. <laughs> yeah. Bigfoot is found in the Lost Coast tapes. <laughs> and it says, in the Lost Coast tapes, Sean Reynolds, an eager television host, is on a mission to debunk the famed Bigfoot hunter Carl Dryback, who claims to possess the body of, the, of a dead Sasquatch. Now, he, here's the thing. I went through a Bigfoot phase about three, two or three months ago. You're and, still in it. Yeah, I, I never really leave it, but I went to the point where I really wanted to see a good Bigfoot movie. Ah, oh, Harry and the Henderson. Get out of here. Yes! Ah. Oh. Thank you, Dan. Let's review that movie, John yeah. Lithgow. Yeah, right. Then we'll have zero listeners next week. <laughs> no. I don't like that movie. I hate you, Alex. I, I got um, like six Bigfoot movies. I watched every one of them from beginning to end. The Legend of Boggy Creek, this, that, the other thing. I, I don't even know the names at this point. But <laughs> uh, all, this hor- shit? all horrible. Okay. Nobody did good. Like, there was one that was decent. 
But in the end, no. They're all a waste. None of them are good. So if they actually, act, you know, it went, I would love a Bigfoot movie that's good. So, hey, we'll see. Now, Alex, do you think Bigfoot exists? No, because if he existed, there would be, to to maintain a um, species, mm-hmm. you would have to have so many that they would be found by now. No, see, I thought the same thing, dude, but you never know. I mean, see, to me, with all the footage around, it seems like more hype than anything. I mean, I'm not saying it's not real. It is what it is, but they, they would have found it by now. The government, it is what it is. It would have found it by now. Yeah, it only took him 10 years to find Bin Laden, but I think Bigfoot, I think he would have been found. <laughs> Too <Tuesday. laughs> I, I get a question. Good I point. A question, Alex. Who do you think would win in a race? Bigfoot the Sasquatch <laughs> or Bigfoot the monster truck? <laughs> or, or the monster truck? Yeah. Uh, the, probably the truck. <laughs> what a weird question. I mean, it depends how far they're going. <whistles> Mike, how many rum and cokes have you had tonight? Just two. <laughs> yeah, too, too many. Yeah, I'm glad you made that point, though, Alex. There's no good uh, Bigfoot movies out there, so... No, not really. No. And I'm a huge fan. I'm not just some jackass hater of things. I, I'm really looking for one, and can't find it, so... It's coming in the fall, so be ready for it. Well, we'll see. Michael J. just booked him as a guest on our show next month. Yeah, get us a screener, Mike, please. <laughs> I'll try it. I'll see what I can do. Um, Lady Gaga is in Machete Kills. Do you care? Because I really don't. Uh, 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 Gaga, oh, ooh do. la la, it's a bad row romance. Dude, you know what she's going to do? She's going to start singing this song and paparazzi right before Danny Trejo puts the gun in her, in her face and <laughs> throws her away. <laughs> she's going to kill it. What are you talking about? You're like, ah, la, ah, ah. I think you're wrong, Mike. Um, musically... Her first album was great. The uh, second album with, that had Bad Romance, great. But here's the thing. Lady Gaga's newest album, Born This Way, one of the worst albums I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, that's because she's full of herself now. In what sense, Alex? It's unlistenable, Dan. Like, there's two or three good songs on it. I, I don't know. It just, it's just... Too poppy? No, it's too artsy. Okay. All right. Like, you know, it's weird because I'm not into the sellout thing, mm. but I'll be honest with you, man. That's her route. I mean, her best stuff is when she just sells out and does dance hits and does club hits. Like, when, you, when you're trying to, like, uh, be a legend and be something more than just an entertainer and, and you're going to be the new Madonna and Born This Way is going to be exactly, uh, what was the song that that copied? Uh, Ex- Express uh, Yourself? Express Yourself, yeah. 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 When you're doing all that and you're focusing way too hard on on what you're bringing back and who you're paying tribute to, when yep. you're doing all that, you're you're losing focus of what you're supposed to be doing. And mm-hmm. just be yourself. Write songs that you are catchy. You make Lady Gaga makes the best choruses I've ever heard in a long Unbelievable. time. Unbelievable. Say what you will about her, dude. A fan or not, she fucking she can write some good shit, man. Oh yeah, dude. Paparazzi, bad romance is like a fucking anthem. Like that's like the one of the most powerful choruses I've ever heard in music. Mm-hmm. And you know, I you know, people might be wondering how in the why why are you listening to this or how? Uh, I'll, I'm gonna go the route everybody goes. It's true though, my girlfriend, and um, that was one person that she played in the car. I didn't mind. It was really good. Good melodies, good writing, good good production. Yeah, but dude, if you if you know good music and you're a fan of music, you listen to everything, dude. And if you're gonna listen to fucking what's out there on the radio, it is what it is. But there there's some good shit sprinkled in there. And what she has, like, I'm not. I wouldn't call myself a fucking Lady Gaga fan by any means. Right. But dude, as a musician, as like you know somebody who studies music, you got to appreciate that shit. Oh yeah. If you don't, then you're fucking fooling yourself and you're lying, dude. You're straight up lying. And a lot of people don't like to admit it, dude. And that's the main thing. And it's like, dude, it's good shit. Like, I may not like it myself, but you realize it's good yeah. and you move on. You know what I mean? You know it's good, but it's not your thing. Right. And that's exactly. the thing. People who hate her are probably just jealous. And and I'm not going to say that everyone who hates somebody is just because of – because I hate a lot of people. 
mm-hmm. and I'm not jealous of them. Because uh, why wouldn't I be jealous of her? I mean, I hate Rihanna. I hate Beyonce. I don't know why anyone listens to either one of them. Well, it's weird, too, because I feel like I don't even know somebody until I get a sense of their musical taste somewhat. Mm-hmm. Now, Alex, what's your favorite band, early 90s? Smashing Pumpkins. Right there. You know, you said that, dude. I was like, okay, boom, there you go. You know what I mean? And that speaks volumes. Yeah. Greatest band of the 90s. Nirvana. Nirvana was just something you can't even explain. Right. It just really connected with people. But Smash and Pumpkins were technically the better band. Unbelievable. Yep, I agree. What's that? My favorite band is uh, Boys to Men. No, uh, I like Duncan Cheek, but he's later dude, 90s. Same Boys thing. to Men. I love Boys to Men, dude. Yeah. One of the first albums I How do I say goodbye <laughs> to Michael J? <Jay. laughs> You're hilarious, sir. Moving on, two has been doing Scary Movie 5. Who's doing Scary Movie 5? Two has been, known as <laughs> Lindsay Lohan and Charlie Sheen. Well, I shouldn't say Charlie Sheen is a has been because he has that successful FX show called Anger Management. Is that successful? No, it sucks. Winning. Is he still I tried, winning? I tried, I tried oh, winner, winner, chicken it. dinner. Winner, 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 chicken dinner. Winning. Did he <laughs> die in Scary Movie 4, 5, 6? Four? I don't know what. No, he was in the. Th- wasn't he in the third one in an opening scene with Pamela Anderson and Jenny McCarthy or something briefly? Yeah, yeah, he dies in, I think, four, right? The opening of four? I don't, I don't know. Who no cares? Are so stupid. Yeah, I don't really You know what? Stuff. I have all four of them, of course, burned. But I don't remember a damn thing from three or four, <laughs> except that, dude. like... Yeah, yeah, but, dude, that, those aren't even scary movie spoofs. Yeah, dude. yeah, weren't they, like, uh, doing um, signs? When yeah. the Wayans brothers left yep. after Scary Movie 2, Scary Movie 3 and 4 are pale comparisons of what right. the Wayans brothers did. So, now, quick question, guys. Number two. What are your thoughts on number two? What did you think? I love Chris Elliott. Love it. I can do it myself. <laughs> strong hand. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can do it myself. David Cross in a wheelchair. Uh, yeah. If anyone loves the torrent thing... Remember the old show Get a Life mm-hmm. that Chris Elliott was in? I do. Yeah. Gotta look that up. Yeah. That's available on DVD, though, I believe. Uh, only a couple episodes, I think, but you can get the whole thing. And it's thing. on Netflix. I is believe. it? No, it's not. Gonna hang a, I believe it is. Number two for not directly spoofing too many movies. It was kind of its own thing, a spoof movie within itself. But second one was decent dude it had some funny fucking yeah. parts but the first one is great it's i just want everybody i just want to clarify uh mike is wrong once again get a life your search had no matches thank you no netflix oh i apologize then i'm stupid stick to what i say everybody right paranormal activity four is coming out october 19th yes Will you see it no who said yes dan dan please tell me you meant no I was extremely sarcastic in that, yes. Exactly. Um, I just wonder where they're going to go with it. I think they really kind of wore it out with the third one, but that's just my opinion. Well, you know what they could do now? Well, wait, this is all found footage. Now, how did they find footage in the third one? Who was recording that shit? N- uh, nobody was recording it. It was tapes that were old VHS tapes that were found of when so the, the family uh, was recording. girl was a kid. You're kidding. No, they it, went back. It is more them. of like a prequel. Yeah. To show how Katie and her sister, you know, from the second one, how they kind of came into know, like, the demon and stuff and like that. And they're so surprised that they're being haunted in the first one. So, yeah. So, wait. these. So, they just found VHS tapes in a box, and they were labeled what? Ghost hauntings? No, they were labeled, <laughs> like, different events, like Katie's eighth birthday, such, you know, and things like that. Now, do we have to sit through the whole birthday to get to the ghost part, or no? Yeah. You have to sit through some, some, some bull ploppy. <laughs> Shark Attack Blu-ray and DVD is coming August 28th. Never saw it. Yeah, nope. I don't either. I don't care. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell me when Jaws 5 comes out. Right? The one... <laughs> The um the Walking Dead season two hits Blu-ray and DVD August twenty eighth for our friends in Anchor Bay. Doesn't Jaws um, hit, hit uh, 
DVD. That is, Blu-ray yeah, trailer? that's next week. Thanks, Dan. You jumped ahead of my story, but yeah. Yeah, no, I was <laughs> trying to do a segue because he said you... jump, motherfucker. <laughs> well, you did a little too late there. Um, where the hell are we? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I'm drunk. Right. Um, who isn't on this show? And then you have uh, yep. the Fun House is coming October 16th from the Fun House. Back. Very excited about that. Do not buy it, people. Fun See, House Alex sucks. Alex says no. I hear good things about it. I hear, hey, dude, it's Toby Hooper. I want to see it. Yeah, but... I need to buy it, and I'll tell you why I need to buy it. Because Arrow Video in the UK, which used to, all their Blu-rays and DVDs, well, the, no, the Blu-rays used to be region-free. And then, like wise asses, they decided to region lock their Blu-rays to region B. So the copy of the Fun House that I bought, you got that I bought the region that I thought was region free, was a region B locked, so I couldn't, you know, so I can't play it, and it's just <laughs> sitting it's here your region, you know, at the case. Well, Mike, go to eBay and sell it to people who live in the region it's in. Yeah, but then I got to ship it to the UK. Do you know how much that costs? Yeah, but oh. eBay, you charge them the shipping. And then oh. Mike's got to be like, but you got to be from the Luxembourg area. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, where, what, is that, isn't that Germany? I don't know, dude. So I don't, um. <laughs> you can Lady Gaga. How about, does anybody care, like, that Lords of Salem is, like, premiering at festivals in September? Yes. Absolutely. What are you, nuts? Fucking A, dude. Dude, Rob Zombie's hitting home runs out of the park almost every time. Well, He's no, the I only agree one with doing you. good horror around here, besides, like, James Wan, and that's it. Yeah, listen, I'm going to give it to you right now. Here's the accurate description. Mm-hmm. Rob Zombie's at the plate. He hits a ground roll double. That's called House of a Thousand Corpses. Next okay. swing, home run, Devil's Rejects. <sighs> Swings, He's up again later. <laughs> <laughs> up again later. Yeah, you can't He's swing. Up again. <laughs> Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie's at the plate. He spits, he grabs his crotch, and he. Ooh! Strikes out. Halloween. No. Another home run. Halloween remake. Strikes he out. He struck out on that, Alex? That's well, funny. you know, he went to bunt, actually. Okay, he bunted it. And uh, he, he got thrown at it first. Okay. Halloween okay. 2. Halloween 2. Bam! Slam. Grand slam. Yeah. Halloween 2. I'm very. I'm looking forward to Rob Zombie's Lords of Salem. I'm into his style and um, his uh, passion. All right. What what else, Mike? And lastly, since uh, Dan already stole my thunder with Jaws coming next week, and get it from Best Buy or Amazon for seventeen ninety nine. Good, Dan. He, Mike stole my thunder earlier in the episode when I was trying to explain. Uh, why Michael Myers? It's okay to walk like a creepy ninety-year-old. Uh, yeah, you're a yeah. thunder stealer. Yeah, you're a thunder stealer. You are. I try <laughs> to be sometimes. Um, and finally, Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh wait, no. Before that, Jamie Kennedy is going to his first con ever. Yeah. Monster Mania 22 in Jersey. You tried crowbarring this one into the last show, and we ignored you. You did. I did. No, yes, I didn't. Yes, I you just, did. No, I found this out after the fact. No, you found silence after you said it. <laughs> Who but Randy is going to be at a convention. Can you no, imagine me, you me question, going up Mike. to him to say hello? How about Andy Barkley? I don't Mike, care about Mike, I got him. a question for you. Now, do you think Jamie Kennedy is very happy with his comedy career now that he's have to uh, be subjected to fucking horror conventions? Yeah, he's about as happy as Kramer is from Seinfeld. You know what? Here's exactly what I would do. I'm, I'm gonna go up to Jamie. If I if I were to go to Monster Mania, I would go up to him and be like, "Are you going?" I, I would like to maybe try You're to. You're not go. gonna I, go, you stupid son of a bitch. I would just walk in there. I gotta get a ride there first. I would just walk in there. And I would go up to him and be like, Randy? I'm you in real life. Dude, no. Uh, this is what you got to do, all right? Make you don't know the rules? No, make a Skeleton Crew logo, laminate it, and then oh, plus that and the crutches, dude. Nobody's going to question you. Go to the fucking front of the line, bro. Wear a Skeleton Crew t-shirt. Right? Yeah, we don't have any yet. We're going to make yeah. them. I'm going to make them this weekend. Okay. I'm going to make a couple. Do you think anybody would ever buy those? If What if I sold them real cheap, like 15 bucks? That's cheap. Um... Yeah, 
That's cheap. Can That's I buy one? Uh, yeah, you could buy one, but I'm going to sell it to you for double the fucking ass. I'll get a, I'll pay triple the price. I'll pay forty five dollars. <laughs> wow, I can't believe we're subjecting people to this. Okay, look at Mike bragging that he knows what fifteen times three is. Okay, wait, what's what's the very last bit of news? Wait, 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 wait. This has to be big, right? This is big. Okay, drum roll. A person that I don't like very much is coming to Har Hound Weekend in November. Hitler? Satan? No, I don't like them either, but this person is worse than Hitler and Satan combined. Gary Busey? No, this is actually this person's actually worse than Gary Busey. Okay, Russell Crowe. No, worse than that. There is no worse. <clears throat> now I'm talking about the one, the only, the very forgettable Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh Wait, my yeah, god, Lori Strode. Boo. I love you. Boo. The classic scream queen. Wow, mm, Lori so Strode. I would just be like, you know, I know you're famous for a lot of shit, but I loved you in Halloween. Well, if she's at a horror convention, I'm sure that's the only line she's getting. <laughs> right. Um, you were great in Freaky Friday. It was like, were you scared when Michael disappeared back into the bush? <laughs> what were you thinking when Michael was sniffing your panties on a clothesline? <laughs> <laughs> Panties out there, he's probably sniffing her bra. Wow, I got two he's probably all sweating because her nipples smell great, Mike. I would imagine. Um, no, but do you guys have any idea how much she's charging? I mean, granted, the, the proceeds for her, no, no, you know what? I know I heard about this. The she's she's charging more than most people, but you, how bad could it be, Mike? Because this is her one and only, uh, and you got to remember. Robert England charges extra. You got to remember uh, Pee Wee Herman. I paid fifty dollars for a autograph and a picture with Pee Wee Herman. Fifty dollars. Yeah, well, he's worth. Okay, what what is she charging? Well, let, let's itemize it. What's she charging for a picture? What is it like an arm? Oh, what is she charging for an autograph? A leg. What is she charging to go in the room when she does her panel discussion? Your firstborn child. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and, and let's let's you know what? It should be noted that at least the proceeds from the meet and greet, so your arms your arms are going to benefit the children's hospital of Los Angeles. Yay. But your legs and your firstborn go to her. And maybe the leg, maybe the leg is so she can, you know, sew it on to replace the leg that she lost when they cut off her man part from being a hermaphrodite. <laughs> Mike, okay, yeah. you killed it. Anyways. <laughs> Mike, I just want to know, um, do you still get an autograph for one of your legs or do those don't count? Uh, no, my legs are pretty dead, so I don't think she'd be interested in that. I don't think one of your legs count as, like, a, a regular leg. Did you have to put both of your legs on the, on the table for an autograph? Mm. Probably <laughs> both of them wouldn't even count. Alex, I'd probably have to use one of yours as a loner, so we'd both lose both of our legs. And yeah, we'd be walking around on stump. well, not really walking around, but, but we'd be, like, kind of, like, sidling around on our stumps. Well, not really walking around, but... We'd be shuffling around on stumps, Alex, because it would take all four of our legs for both of us to get an autograph. What are you trying to say? I got chicken legs? Man, I don't skip leg day, baby. I go to the gym every no, day. No, I'm of the saying week. one of your legs, yeah. you'd have to donate one of your legs for me because my legs won't work. Yeah. All right. <laughs> go to the gym like once a year. Well, thank you all for listening <laughs> to this. I am so sorry. <laughs> Uh, you should be listening to a better show, but you chose us for some bizarre reason. And the fact that you're still bizarre. here at this, yeah, the fact that you're here at this point in time, you are glutton for punishment. Yeah, but we love you, you yeah. sick bastards. Yeah, we really love you, and masochists. We will... That's what yeah, I call sadomasochists. Yep. Yep. And uh, oh, fan sadomat. Thanks. Good job. Yep. And we only. Destroy your ears, but you could poke your eyes out as soon as you turn this off. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And we will see you next week with some, uh, Mike, what do you think? Is it retrospective time? Let's do some evil dead shit, huh? What do you think? Come on. I was going to say we should do the first Jaws since the uh, Blu-ray's <sighs> coming out. The first Jaws. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, since we'll the do Blu-ray's that. coming out, we'll do the first Jaws and then we got some some news Maybe. and then, you know, we might have some other stuff. You never know. But I'm a retrospective guy. When's that happening? We'll do that next month, maybe. Next month? Yeah. We'll take a little break from the retrospectives. We just... That was a month ago. Yeah, but we floored these people. we got to give them regular shows and entertainment. Unless we're still going to do the news right now. Yeah, they don't want us to rat just yet. Yep, slow and steady wins the race. That's 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 my motto. fucking last, gentlemen. Yeah, that's my motto in real life. Yeah. Is it? (laughs) Slow and steady wins the race. You know what I do when I'm about to finish? I pull out for like 30 seconds and go right back into it. So those 30 seconds, that's going to equivalent, what, two months? And then we will hit you up with another retrospective, I promise you, because that's my whole thing, because I can't do anything else. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I know how to do. Yeah. So there you go. There you have it. Another shit episode of the Skeleton Crew. (laughs) We will see you next week for another shit episode. Peace. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh my god.